Ma'am, your mic is muted. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhakar. So good morning and uh, welcome to class, the third week of our class. Uh, to all those who have joined in on the online class and for all those who have uh, joined in with the e-learning portal as well. Uh, I trust these lessons that we are doing are not just an exercise of information and knowledge and understanding, but uh, uh, really helping each one of us to practically live out what we've learned and uh, come to a place of wholeness and deliverance. Um, so should we start with a word of prayer and uh, bring today's discussion and class to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are so interested in our souls. You desire that we are whole in our bodies, in our spirits and in our souls. Thank you because you show us different ways in which we may be bringing ourselves into bondage and also other influences that are in our lives. Today, as we look a little deeper into the same topic of causes of problems, Lord, we pray that uh, your spirit will work wherever we are, Lord, individually, in each of our hearts to help us to discern and recognize areas that are in oppression. And we pray, God, that even as we place our faith in you and the work of the cross and the authority that we have in you, we pray that you will bring us to a place of wholeness and deliverance. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. OK. Um, so quickly, would somebody like to recap what we had um, started discussing last week? And maybe we had looked at around six, seven pointers of, uh, pro of causes of problems that occur within the soul. <clears throat> so maybe even as you're, as you're doing a quick recap, you could probably also bring out a maybe something that that uh, you recognized within yourself or recognized within um, maybe as you've ministered that uh, something that we have learned has really brought about a change and a transformation and a recognition and awareness about what we may be engaging in that causes uh, uh, harm to our souls or emotional struggles and pain. So. Um, two things. One is maybe a quick recap of what were the points that we looked at last week. And if there's a testimony, a thought, an observation, something you learned, something you want to bring about, you're free to do that right now. Because uh, it, it's also understanding and learning from each other's uh, uh, learnings, experiences, uh, testimonies, uh, and it brings it to life that, okay, I mean, you know, I never thought this was something that was dealt with, but uh, just your observations or testimonies really help. Yeah, so open to the class. Yes, <clears throat> there's absolute silence today. Maybe we'd like to hear from some from some of the students we haven't heard at all, some voices we've, lovely voices we haven't heard. We're all, we're all family here. We're all loving brethren and sisters. No one is here to judge or question, okay? So feel free to open up and share or, um, or if you don't feel like sharing at least, maybe what we learned, a recap of what we had learned. <laughs> okay, Mangi, you've been, um, <laughs> you've been chosen to speak, Mangi. Somebody likes your voice here. 
<laughs> Hopes put you put you on a spot. <laughs> yes, yeah. He's uh, my lovely brother, and I love him a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I believe we, we were in chapter two. We spoke the uh, causes of problems and you gave us seven i think it's seven yeah you're right seven 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 uh causes things that causes us to to have yeah. problem uh, one of them is a wrong mindset then say so because of our wrong thinking we end up Uh, we, when we find ourselves in a wrong situation, we, we in, in a situation that causes thought, and then that thought we interpret into two feelings, and then those feelings and emotion end up, we end up going into wrong behavior. And then we, what you said, our words, wrong speaking also causes problem. Uh, continue deep, uh repeated sin when we, we we continue doing doing the same sins over and over and over again and the fourth, fourth one i think was uh, was a uh, trauma of uh, mm -hmm. things that passed in the past in, in our family uh, great uh, thank you thank you mangi uh, i you know you, i think mangi did a great job of doing four let's let's uh let's ask somebody else to take on from where he left thank you mangi that was that was excellent Yes, engaging in deep-seated sin. Yes, I think Mangi spoke about that. He said continual sin. What were the couple of other areas? Rupa, you said wrong thinking patterns. Yes, that also uh, Mangi spoke about. Other, uh, the last three, anybody remembers? Yes. And yes, several okay. commitments and practices and mm -hmm. curses, uh, which right. we speak over ourselves, or probably some people might have spoken on us, uh, on us. So those curses, mm -hmm. uh, one in trauma, trauma and adverse uh, experiences. All right, great. Thank you, thank you, Abni. Anybody would like to share any of these? Um, uh, something that they've probably noticed that either they've engaged in or they've seen others engaging in that's caused emotional problems in fact i, I actually wanted to bring up an example that i uh, missed bringing up the last time on one of these practices because that's something that um, i often you know we, we've often noticed in in our culture and uh, maybe it is prevalent in other cultures also so i'll, I'll bring that up once i hear from Anybody? Just leaving it open for maybe 10, 15 seconds if anyone wants to share if any of this has brought meaning to their lives and um, has helped them to identify where there has been an open door into emotional uh, uh, unwholeness. Okay. I, I'll respect your, uh, you know, just the fact that maybe you wouldn't like. Rupa, yes, Rupa, please go ahead. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Rupa. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, I came, when I got married, uh, my father-in-law is a doctorate in physics. He used to work for UNES, UN job. But I heard that during is uh, earlier years he started uh, practicing mormon that mm. uh, religion and he started uh, freemasonry mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. he started practicing it i could see a lot of uh, trauma and the mm. emotional uh, illness that they were all going through because of that but uh, instead of uh, i started praying me and my husband for that and uh, he died at the age of 89 i got married at the when he was 83 years old mm -hmm. and uh, by the time he was uh, by 89 god brought 
a strong conviction in his life and he turned back to god and he uh, was saved and and he slept in the lord mm -hmm. i was very happy for that but it brings a lot of emotional um, unrest in the house to uh, breaking of marriages and even though they were living together we can mm -hmm. see that there was no uh, communication or fellowship like that between my mm -hmm. in-laws but by mm -hmm. god's grace towards the end god has really worked in his life and delivered him from that and i'm very thankful for that thank you ma'am praise god thank you rupa for sharing yeah that's really helpful uh, to understand you know i think when you, when each of us bring up some examples like this we begin to i mean a lot is revealed to us as to what is there in the outside world that may camouflage itself as the truth but is is actually a false religion thank you rupa yes charles please go ahead thank you so much pastor um um i'm i'm the first born and the, my father is the the boy the first boy of our, of our grandmother but our grandmother was the 12th wife of our grandfather. And um, my, my mom is the first wife of my father. But after mm -hmm. he was, I think, like two years old, uh, when there was, I think, uh, a, a sister that follows me, so my father and my mother separated. and. Mm -hmm the my father married another woman and we were taken to our grandmother's home and we stayed there so when sometime sometime there i don't remember how old i was but we were digging and i told my sister and i said sister when i grow up and i marry i will not produce children from two wives and it went and we grew up I will continue, my father continued to marry other women currently to this, the one he has is the sixes. And now um, I married, after marrying, but this marriage was not official in church. And then uh, I continued to go while they was going to this cause, I was taking alcohol. And my wife was told is that when I got saved, she said i am spending time at church the time i would be say, spending in the bar i would spend it at church this time i would come early i it would be home i would be doing that but she capitalized on that and she had to go away and i spent five years trying to press her and get her back we wait uh, so that we can wait and she becomes officially my wife. She refused. After five years, I married another one. And when I married another one, when we had produced our first daughter, I, I remembered what I had purposed in my heart not to produce two ch children from two mothers. I remembered that this is now an ancestral thing that was uh, about polygamy that was following me up and things had not worked out well even to level that even the that one was almost going so um, practices from the ancestral part also need to be dealt with <clears throat> when i remember that i think it's god who it's god who reminded me that then I started working upon myself and praying, breaking all those things and making sure that I'm able to not have now a third wife. So that was it. And I am really in, uh, in agreement with the dealing with ourselves, however much we are born new when we become saved, but also those things have to be dealt with. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charles, for sharing that and that is a life story that you just shared 
and uh, I'm sure that took a lot of courage and you know just your heart and willingness to have all of us listen and learn from that thank you brother charles we we're so grateful to god that he opens our minds and um, gives us a revelation about things and brings us to a place of freedom and uh, thank you for sharing that and i hope that has spoken to some of us uh, <clears throat> with similar situations that uh, we also may have gone through um, I wanted to highlight one, probably certain, um, uh, on, on the point, the fifth point that we spoke about the last time is the involvement in the occult and false religions, which can open the door to influence in our lives. And something that, uh, you know, we see in our Indian culture and in our practice, uh, probably uh, maybe those of you who are from different cultures may have experienced or seen this, is the um, role that things like palmistry, astrology, numerology um, plays on the minds and the lives of people. You know, in uh, uh, I, I, we don't buy physical newspapers right now, so I, I, I don't know how it is, but then I remember growing up, you know, in these physical newspapers that we had, you would have an entire column or a half a column full of um, zodiac signs and how your life goes forward. Um, so, uh, so this is something that uh, often, be, you know, used to become like a fad where people, uh, you know, my as as I as I grew up, I I've also read it, you know, it's because it seemed interesting what's going to happen to your week what's going to happen to your month um, and all of that was uh, only when you know started reading the word did i realize that all of this is an involvement of the occult or things like palmistry where people go to um, an astrologer and have their palms read or they have uh, here, there are many practices where you have people sitting with tarot cards. You know, there's a parrot that walks in and brings about a tarot card and they are, you know, your future is spoken about or you look at the stars and figure out what it is or there are certain numbers that come by and uh, people use certain numbers for their homes and for their um uh, for their cards or in order to get, uh, uh, you know, to have, uh, if they want a, a a day to to celebrate something or to you know to have a wedding or to have a, a construction of the home they look up auspicious days these are all and and there are even i've i've known of believers who engage in these practices to um, to find out right and again these these also belong to this to that sphere of involving yourself in the occult and and things that are uh, of the false because there again there is an uh, there is a open door to bringing to bringing in these influences so would would you all do do you all feel that i mean is this something that you all have seen you all have noticed as uh, people you may know who's engaged in that has caused significant struggles. Uh, anybody? Uh, no? Okay. Ma'am. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, Abni. Go ahead. Go ahead, Abni. Ma'am, what you said, I also identify, I've also done all this, but uh, yes, uh, once I received Christ and I understood that it was wrong i did pray and seek forgiveness and renounced everything and it is still prevalent and uh, very recently we are uh, close to a hindu family who is uh, you know believing in all this and they are going to through a tough time and because of uh, they being told that uh, this is how things are going to be because of that divinity and all Mm -hmm. They've accepted the situation. They are going through a very tough time, but uh, you know the hearts are so hardened. They don't want to listen about mm -hmm. the love of God, and it is difficult. But we are praying for them, believing mm -hmm. that the Lord would uh, open their eyes to see the truth and bring them out. And they are really going through a very, very difficult time. 
Uh, and I, I really, I, apart from praying, I really don't know how to help them. <laughs> but I really wish I could, you know, help them. <laughs> Mm, I think it's important for us to just pray that their blind eyes are opened to the truth, you know, that the Holy Spirit will take off the scales from their eyes and they will be able to uh, see this better. All right. Okay. Um, wow, I have three people wanting to respond. Okay, so we'll have around maybe five minutes. Yes, uh, I think, Charles, you, you put up your hand first. Would you like to start? Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, uh... When I was a, a classroom teacher, a head teacher, um, I would be uh, having the newspapers and the, the, that part of horoscope. I would be trying to look at it. Um, then when I was staying in one of the cities, the, the newspaper for the following day would be coming out in the evening. So mm -hmm. I would again... <laughs> now try to tap in it and try to look into the future through my mm. horoscope so yeah. I, I i was already in that yeah but when 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 i got saved there is a small book i read delivered from the powers of darkness mm -hmm. and it was mentioning little about that then i went ahead and searched for it and i read through it and i said oh Ah, this is wrong. Then um, I also read another book about Pam, and recently I saw it even on, on, on the phone as an app, Pam Chat, and uh, nowadays I can't join it. I, even those horoscope or the, the stars, all those things, but for sure they had taken my brains. But thank God that when I got saved, then things took another shape. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Charles. Yes, uh, Shri Kumar? Thank you, Pastor. It's, uh, it's very uh, uh, true. And uh, uh, like, um, when, when uh, I see my own family, uh, where um, I'm coming from, and um, the, that the power of darkness is still, uh, you know, is, is holding their life in such a way that I can see that entire um, the family line means my, uh, my from my father's side and my mother's side, they were uh, all practicing this, um, you know, this um, astrology and uh, witchcraft and other things. So I can see the sudden deaths at, and um, you know stock and um, barrel, um, and other sicknesses and uh, and very young age people are dying and and also one thing which I saw that the male of my family are dying at a very very young age and so many things like even though the, the their children are studied well but they are not able to um, progress and uh, they are not able to achieve that success what i so what you said is uh, that's true i am the first born from my family who who received jesus and um, so so seeing all these things as sister Abdi said like after coming to christ when we came to know all this truth uh, so it, it it will be separated us from that darkness but even still now also we are actually fighting against those uh, the power of the darkness very true that's a, it's very sad actually um, um, that's a very painful situation will be so i will mean, see these things yes, mm -hmm. thank you thank you uh, brother shri kumar i think you know as uh, you know even as we're hearing these stories let's uh, keep some notes and just keep praying for for people who've uh, actually spoken and you know are finding some of these as continuous struggles and let's uh, let's intercede for them um, you know as a community as a as a, as a uh, community of believers when we pray there is you know there is a lot more of power. Yes, the person. I mean, each of you, you know, use your authority and uh, cast out, uh, you know, whatever practices and whatever generational bondages that have been passed through. Cast it off, and and you know, just seal your homes by the blood of Jesus. But let's continue praying for one another. Thank you, Shri Kumar. Uh, Christopher. Ah, uh, yes. So uh, I also can identify with this. Um, uh, so just as a 
background, uh, I lived in the Far East, um, as in Hong Kong and Singapore, for uh, over 20 years. And uh, uh, among the uh, the Orientals and the Chinese, there's it's a, there's a lot of superstition uh, and uh, a lot of you know these these kind of practices. And looking back, I think um, I um, I mean I think sometimes you do things out of ignorance, you know. So, example, you have these uh, tourist sites where you, you know you, they take you to a Chinese temple, and uh, you know you have this kind of a cylindrical kind of box filled with sticks, and each each stick has got a different um, you know it's got things written in in, in Chinese in the Chinese language, and then you're supposed to hold that that box and you know keep shaking it, and uh, usually one one stick will come out, or one stick will be the most prominent one there. And that will be your, uh, you know, your kind of, uh, uh, you know, your. Uh, it gives you some detail about, you know, what what's going to happen in the, in in, uh, in the rest of your life. Uh, of course, you know, as I said, you do it through ignorance, and you know, you just um, you don't really uh, believe in it. Um, but looking back, also, I think there were a couple of people that we, uh, um, actually, friends of my wife, uh, who, uh, uh, two people who were actually very influenced by the. Uh, by these kind of uh, occult pra practices, and um, what wh one observation I have is that usually what happens is the people who are influenced by the occult they are actually quite strong personalities, and they try to influence other people uh, to to believe in what they uh, what they practice. And um, again, I think looking back, uh, uh, I didn't really I was not maybe not strong enough to to sort of uh, you know just uh, you know tell my wife that you know I should not uh, she should not be actually uh, be influenced and she didn't actually be influenced but still I mean you know people uh, these kind of people will talk about it and um, you know I think we should not really uh, even uh, you know uh, even uh, you know entertain any any kind of conversation around that so uh, just thought I'll just share that with you thank you thank you Christopher that's that's a good warning uh, like, like uh, I think Christopher pointed out something very significant of how you know strong personalities um, can definitely influence you greatly. So just understanding how you need to keep away uh, and disengage is needed. Yeah. Um, yes, Charles, we can pray for Avni and the family in Avni. Yes, we could, we could definitely do that. We could probably do that by the end of this hour, definitely. Taisha, I see your hand also up. Would you like to share? Yes, please. Good morning, everyone. Um, on, on the, as it relates to the divination and the, the, the our scopes, I too was a victim of loving to read horoscopes because I want to know what's going to happen. I went till I, I even subscribed to horoscopes to my email every religious days. I will get it in my inbox to see what was happening and tar card reading. It will come in my emails and I would look and if I have an issue, this is what I would consult to see what is going to happening and look out for these readings. It was a part of my regular practice, but I didn't know that this was wrong and this is not how God wants us to live. And I also, with that, they sell you these different things. And I also consult median to see, okay, what my future is going to look like because um, they sell these things and you get, you they lure you in one step at a time by just the horoscope we started then the Torah card reading and then they sell you another thing you can talk to a median to get readings and so forth and then they'll email you a bunch of readings and these cause curses upon my life which I didn't know I didn't know that this was where it was coming from because I didn't know that this was wrong you know and it reminded me of Saul, King Saul, when he, you know, forsaken God and what his laws was. And it was when I read it, I had to repent. And, you know, because I did not know that these horoscopes and all of these were wrong. 
And Christ does not want us to live like this. He wants us to consult his word and apply them to our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Taisha. Thank you so much. I think this, uh, you know, just us sharing really helps us to um, just be understanding and uh, be wise about what is around us. I think more so for our children, for the generation to come, because a lot of this, like, uh, um, uh, like Charles had written, you know, occult is so deep in modernity. And I agree that it is so, uh, it's so, it's packaged uh, very, very well and, and, you know, given to you as something that's as, as good as entertainment. And to be, to keep a watchful eye over what even our children are engaged in and what they go through. Uh, and a lot of them is be uh, because of ignorance in itself. And I'm sure a lot of us engaged in many things because of ignorance. But after knowing the word of God, uh, you know, have come to a place of repentance and walking in truth and walking by the alignment of God's word. So thank you all for sharing. That was That was wonderful. I mean, I think this has really put the class into some perspective. Okay, so let's move forward and uh, we'll start off, we'll go ahead with the, with the learning and I'd like to pray, um, we'll, I'll, I'll ask Brother Charles to pray for Afti's family just before we break off for the, for the next hour. So um, uh, just to quickly uh, just let you know which page I'm going to be following from. Um, I, I'm on page 10, okay? So I'm on page 10 uh, of the textbook so that if you'd like to follow uh, through, you could, you could go ahead. So we were looking at problems <clears throat> that causes um, uh, difficulties in the, in, in the emotions or in, in the soul, the, the problems that cause, that, uh, that come about in the soul. What are some of the causes? And we did look at these six, seven areas that all of you, you know, we, we just constructed together. Now, another, uh, another part, another aspect of this is um, what we are also going to be looking at is how evil spirits cause problems. How do evil spirits cause problems? Now, even when we're talking about evil spirits, um, you know, there is nothing to be scared about because sometimes just the <clears throat> uh, conversation about evil spirits or talking about evil spirits can make us feel very uncomfortable. But it is important for us to know and also important for us to understand what scripture has spoken about because not only are we to have knowledge about this but then even as we are all in places of ministry we may be it is important for us to identify and discern what what is what okay so we're going to look at um, it, it, this can be in quite an extensive study but we've picked up some few important points that we need to highlight so the bible tells us very clearly that there is this uh, there is satan Okay, who is the uh, the the head and the 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 source of all evil, and also says that he also has a kingdom where which 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 are other demons, and the Bible tells us that these demons are fallen angels who joined Satan um, in rebelling against God, and who were defeated and were cast out of heaven along with Satan. So we do understand just like the presence of the Holy Spirit and angels, there is also the presence of uh, the devil and the evil spirits alongside with it. So the demons or the devils or evil spirits continue to serve the devil in his attempt to lead God's creation away from him and into sin. Okay, And that's the purpose of the demons or of the evil spirits that are there. They are, uh, they, they, that's what they do. That's their mission to ensure that people do not meet with God and are pushed deeper and deeper into sin and into their crutch. Okay. <clears throat> so when we look at scripture, we see, um, uh, so, um, and, and, in, we, we, will, we will look at a couple of verses uh, as we go along. Uh, so in scripture, the human being often is uh, pictured like a house. And 
it's the evil spirits seek entrance into this house so that they can find a place to reside or find embodiment and also to express themselves. So we understand this through some scriptures and I want to bring up some that are, that has been written here so if you're if you do have your Bibles keep them handy it would be nice if uh, I can have some you know some students just read out some of these verses uh, someone could just uh, open up to Matthew 12 43 and 45 uh, just keep it ready and uh, uh, you know I, I will bring it up after I talk about this verse so we understand this perspective of human being being pictured like a house where evil spirits seek entrance is when um, the Lord talks to Cain you know, the Lord tells Cain this in Genesis uh, 4 7 he says do not let sin crouch at your door this uh, if if you don't do th do well you know you won't be accepted it is of, of these of the offering that Cain had to bring about he says if you don't do well sin is laying is at your door it's crouching at your door and it's desirous for you right and says it's it's desirous for you so we we see that it it's it's evil spirits wanting to seek entrance into into our lives okay uh, we look at another verse Matt, uh, other three verses matthew 12 43 to 45 has anybody got it and could you all just kindly unmute and read it out that'll be helpful matthew 12 43 to 45 shall i read man yes Amni, go ahead Matthew 12, verse 43 to 45 says, when an, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Amni. So even in these verses, it shows you how it's um, the 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 person is like a house and where the evil spirit wants to come in and make its dwelling there all right so it's it's like it's like an allegory that that we are that we are able to understand that it enters into our being now there are different kinds of spirits and they are usually seen or they are identified with different things and we will take some examples over here so spirits can be identified with a uh, with with a specific corresponding negative emotion so a negative emotion is empowered by a corresponding spirit um, and some of the examples that we we see here like the spirit of hate so when there is a spirit of hate there could be it's empowered by uh, an evil spirit or the spirit of fear or the spirit of pride, the spirit of self-pity, the spirit of depression and heaviness, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of um, uh, of lust. Right. So these uh, these negative emotions are there, but it it is empowered by uh, a certain a certain spirit. So they're called by by the names of spirit of hate or spirit of lust or spirit of heaviness or depression. So to be able to identify that there can be negative emotions that are empowered by certain spirits. Similarly, there are also deeds that are that correspond to a certain to certain spirits, certain deeds that correspond to to spirits. Uh, for example, again, the, so some of the examples given here is the spirit of murder, of drunkenness, of adultery, of uncleanness, of witchcraft, of suicide, of uh, lying, of stealing, of murder. So all of this where there are evil deeds that correspond to a certain spirit. And, you know, you see this um, and something that I've seen very significant in um, especially where there is uh, um, where there's the presence of suicide um, 
you know, if you look back into generations, and this is something that I'm talking from a clinical experience also, you know, when, when someone has come with, a, with an attempt suicide, you look back into their history, you will find one or two members <clears throat> in their families that actually have committed suicide or there has been an attempt of suicide, right? And, um, you know, in, in clinical experience, we write it as a family history of suicide, okay? But uh, it makes so much of sense to understand that these evil deeds are backed up or corresponded by a certain spirit, okay? So to understand this, and especially when you notice that the... Um, uh, uh, the attempts of suicide are multiple and it seems to be um, prevalent within uh, maybe a certain community or within within a certain home right it is something that we we need to keep our eyes open and be aware of so this the the deeds that uh, um, that empower that that the evil spirits actually empower. Then there are certain physical conditions that are empowered by certain spirits, like the spirit of pain, uh, spirit of arthritis, the spirit of death, the spirit of other health kind of physical conditions that may be there. And also, spirits also can orchestrate certain life experiences or certain situations like the spirit of poverty or the spirit of lack or the spirit of confusion. So these are spirits um, and, uh, and it's, it's important to recognize that um, uh, what you, where is it that you can identify if they are being backed or empowered by a certain spirit. Now, demons generally operate in groups and we see uh, we see this uh, uh, spoken about in matthew 12 43 and 45 which uh, avni just read uh, and like you know it, it once the house is cleaned up it goes up and brings a lot more back into it to you know to to just uh, bring about a stronger sense of influence so they do operate in in groups and we see that also in uh, mark 5 9 you know when jesus casts away uh, the uh, the demon he says what is your name and it answers i'm legion for we are many legion meaning me being many now this is this is something i think it's important for us to understand that <clears throat> there can be common um groups of spirits that work together and i'd like to bring about certain examples of this of how uh, this takes place um so the uh, you know, we'll take that, I think, two, three examples as given in your book, but uh, let, let me just explain that to you. For example, you know, the groups of spirits which could, um, some negative emotions that it could empower is, let's say, you know, it starts maybe with the resentment. There is something, um, let's take an example of um, maybe there is a family, uh, family uh, issue that's going on with regard to property or things like that, and someone has cheated somebody of something or maybe cheated somebody of a, of a property and uh, they're unable to forgive and then they they begins to harbor a sense of resentment okay it starts with simple uh, emotions that may come about of resentment but gets deeper filled in and uh, you know the, the the spirit empowers that resentment by you know adding in a lot more of fuel to that of of maybe having these uh, it, it may start with the wrong pattern of thoughts you know that, that you know my brother is out to kill me my brother is out to um destroy me uh, he never loved me so that begins and and it it builds up that resentment which goes into hatred which then creates uh, you know, we've opened the door that those kind of emotional, negative, wrong thoughts, experiences like we learned the last time opens the door into for anger and then it finally leads into murder, you know. So but when you look at it, these are collectively that takes place, something that's probably starts off with a wrong word or a wrong thought or a, or a, or a practice um, that has not been taken care of, moves uh, deeper into um in into into stronger things where there is a spirit uh, of of murder that that adds in similarly when we look at um, another set of uh, set of another group or another set uh, let's say an individual starts to um 
maybe there's been some significant experience in their lives that has uh, caused a sense of self-pity okay um probably let's say an experience like uh, maybe a loss of a job or a loss of a loved one that that causes a, a sense of that creates a sense of self-pity that you know they begin to feel victimized and begin to feel oh poor me you know this shouldn't have happened to me this is not where i um, you know i could have had better so again these could just be uh, you know, uh, wrong thoughts, uh, just wrong negative ways in which the the experience has been has been understood. So it starts with self pity, moving into something that becomes very desperate, and there's a lot of despair and and hopelessness comes about, and and that could get leads into depression. And uh, you know, like like we were talking about, some of these conditions are backed or empowered by a spirit. Uh, again you know uh, even as even as we have spoken about this later we are going to see that we don't associate every depression that you see with the demonic uh, influence okay uh, so that we will come to but I, I just want to express this as as we're seeing how could one thing lead into another when there is a door that's opened for, into self pity and and that runs into hopelessness um depression comes about and then uh, which can lead to suicide. So self-pity leads to that despair, leads to that spirit of hopelessness, and that leads to uh, suicide. So when you when you look at this, we we need to just not deal with deliverance, you know, delivering them from the spirit of murder or from the spirit of anger, but also bringing them to a place of wholeness where they are uh, in a place of. Um, renewing and transforming their mind from this place of pity and this place of despair that they come in. So uh, I, I hope you can see that connection. I hope you'll are with me. I'll take one more example, which is there another group that's spoken about is lust, uncleanness, adultery, fornication. So initially, it's just, um, you know, engaging in, in lustful thoughts, opening the mind to um, bad images, bad thoughts, um, uh, all probably sexual and obscene in nature, that creates, uh, that gives it an open place for a place of uncleanness. Okay. And this opens the door and continues into fornication or into uh, into hardcore pornography or uh, which leads again then later into adultery so again this this is a place that you know just the person opening up opening the minds the doors of their mind to something that is unclean can open uh, the uh, the door to an evil spirit entering in and uh, uh, creating a sense of um, uh, comfort in in adultery or in fornication and this again is something we just don't not just deliverance but also wholeness we're helping or needing to work with people to be emotionally whole to change and and um, renew and transform the kind of thoughts that they may have and and then again also delivering them from these kind of spirits okay i hope that the, uh, that was clear was that was that clear or are there any questions is i all with me through this okay i suppose we all are because i haven't had any questions yes thank you thank you okay great all right okay so um we're close to uh breaking off for an hour brother charles may i please ask that you uh please pray for uh this family that abni has spoken about and um uh, that would be open to hearing god's word and the gospel so that they can get freedom over to you brother charles let's pray dear heavenly father we are really thankful to you that uh, you have seen us fit to do this work of ministering to the people that you love. You have given this work to angels, but because of your mercy and love, you allowed us to do this. You have even placed your word in our hands, the Bible, that we could hold it and be able to reach others. I bring to you our sister, Avni, who is having uh, a family near her, and the family is not believing in the one true God. So they pray that you will uh, bring favor upon her, that she will be favored, and that she will 
have a method of connection to the family that Lord Jesus, the spirit of innovation and invention and the devotion for us, um, discernment will be also accredited to her in a deeper way that she will be able to know what to do with the family. I speak of the yearning by the family that you are going to divinely connect the two, the family and Avenue, and that they will be able to be willing to allow her to speak to them. Thank you, Lord, that you are doing this for the glory of your name and for our good. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Charles. All right, we'll uh, close. For, uh, we'll uh, have a break of 10 minutes. It's 10.52 on my clock, and we will return at 11 to see you soon.